I get many questions, whether that's on YouTube, Twitter, or other social media platforms on how to get into cybersecurity, how to get into networking, how to get into IT. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at a new certification that may just help kickstart your career in cybersecurity. So this new cybersecurity certification I am talking about is a new entry level certification from ISC Squared. ISC Squared is one of the world's leading cybersecurity professional organizations. It's an international non-profit membership association for information security leaders. And over the years, ISC Square has grown tremendously, especially with certifications like the CISSP. What we are discussing though is a recent post from ISC Square that talks about this new certification that they are offering. This is the Certified in Cybersecurity certification. Now, back in May, ISC Squared released some media content around a scheme that they are setting up to help bridge the gap in cybersecurity essentially and what this was was a scheme to uh, essentially provide 100,000 free entry level certification exams along with content in order to pass those exams um, to people looking to get into cybersecurity, whether that's people that uh, maybe like you, maybe just graduated university and looking to move into cybersecurity, maybe those that are looking for career changes, maybe doing something totally different right now, or maybe already in IT in some way, shape or form, but wanting to explore more uh, within the realms of cybersecurity. And what this scheme uh, was intended to do was to, as I say, bridge the gap between the um, skill shortage we have globally at the minute. This scheme that they mentioned around the uh, provision of 100,000 free certifications and content for the new entry-level certification that they have is um, underway, I believe and uh, that is being rolled out across the, the, the UK. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. What we are here to talk about is the pledge now for 1 million certified in cybersecurity. And this, what we're looking at now, is a blog post that was released by ISC Squared yesterday, 19th of July, 2022. And it basically explains their commitment to helping people get into cybersecurity and the way that they are doing that is by trying to entice people to take their new entry level certification which is the certified in cybersecurity so what we're going to do today is we're going to run through uh, the intentions of this the potential benefits of this and why I think this may be a good stepping stone for anybody that's reaching out to me or just in general looking to get into cybersecurity or into the IT industry as a whole. So let's just talk a little bit about the blog post that was released yesterday and the content within. So. I'll put a link within my description to this blog post so you can take a read for yourself. But what we'll do is we'll just briefly summarize some of the bits and pieces in here. So they start off by speaking about um, the pledge. So they're, they're looking at trying to impact the cybersecurity industry in a big way. And as I said, that's by helping to bridge the gap uh, of the 2.7 million cybersecurity professionals that are needed globally right now. And they speak about the initiative that we just briefly looked at around the 100K in the UK initiative, providing the 100,000 free exams and courses for UK residents. 
And they then go on to speak about how they are continuing on with that theme of being able to provide a way of helping uh, to, to close that gap and to upskill those that are looking to get into cybersecurity. It then goes on to talk about research that also suggests that organizations that focus on recruiting and develop, development of entry-level cybersecurity staff, including those with little to no experience, accelerates the invaluable hands-on work experience the next generation of professionals need to build successful cybersecurity careers. So what that really means is that ISC Square really, and, and the research of course, um, suggests that it's really beneficial to focus on those that are kind of early in career or entry level with in cybersecurity. And that's something that's been recognized from what I can see as well, actually, in the industry at the moment. Many more businesses and companies are starting to recognize the potential of recruiting and taking on entry level staff that have the potential to be upskilled. It then goes on to speak about the pilot and how they're in the final stages of the, the pilot and then discuss a little bit more about how this program will work. So this is where we get to the bit that uh, is beneficial for you, especially if you are looking at potentially taking this um, certification. Now it's saying that how this program will work from September, ISC Squared is going to announce how qualified individuals can participate. So by quali qualified individuals, that means there's going to be some form of criteria that you need to meet in order to participate in the program. And it talks about the 100K pilot in the UK that they're doing at the minute. And it says that it's going to work very similar to that. And it's kind of alluding to it here in the blog post here that participants will receive a free exam as well as access to the ISC Squared Certified in Cybersecurity Online Self-Paced Education course. So that's great because that means if you potentially get on to the program, if you qualify for the program, whatever it may be, find out more in September. That potentially means that you're not only going to get the opportunity to take the certification exam for free and get certified, you also have the content self-paced in order to learn what you need to know in order to take the certification. And the great thing about self-paced courses is that you can go back, you can go, uh, you know, you, you can pretty much go at your own pace until you feel comfortable and ready to take that certification exam. Now, it talks about the domains that are covered within the uh, certified in cybersecurity exam in order to get certified. Now, domains essentially mean the different areas and topics that are going to be covered in the exam and what you need to know and what you will learn in order to get certified. So it looks like here they've got five domains here. So one's security principles, one's focused on business continuity, disaster recovery and incident re response concepts. The other's focused on access control concepts, network security and security operations. And don't worry about not knowing what they mean at the minute, because we'll take a brief look at some more documentation shortly, which may explain it a little bit more for you. Closing out on this blog post before we switch to that document, it then goes on to speak about kind of who they're trying to target really. So we can see here that they're mentioning university students, whether their students are still studying or whether those students have recently graduated. It speaks about career changes. So those that are looking to shift into cybersecurity from a total different area and have never had no exposure to cybersecurity. And it talks about other professionals. So, you know, trying to entice 
everybody else uh, that's looking to expand their skill set within cybersecurity. It's trying to essentially say that if you are interested in cybersecurity but don't know where to start, then this may be the course for you to be looking at. It then lastly closes out with um, how it's trying to focus on underrepresented people in cybersecurity. So it's looking at increasing diversity within the workforce, something that is very close to my heart, especially with um, the recent company that myself and my partner started, uh, where we look at recruiting talented individuals from diverse backgrounds with diverse skill sets, not just those traditional backgrounds that we tend to see, you know, university degrees um, from affluent universities and stuff like that. We kind of look at the whole spectrum and it's recognizing that the industry as a whole needs to do more in order to make it more inclusive. So it's, it's focusing on that area as well. And it really says that 500,000 course enrollments and exams will be directed towards students of historically black colleges and universities, so HBCUs, minority serving institutes, tribal organizations and women's organizations across the globe. This is excellent news in, in my opinion. So well done to ISC squared for, um, for this pledge. And if there's any way that I can get involved, then I will be getting involved. So do uh, keep a lookout for any content that I post around this uh, from, from now. Lastly, then it goes on to say that you can find out more information about this cybersecurity certification here. Um, when you do that, then you can, um, you'll be taken through to this link here, where you can then download the ultimate guide to the entry level cybersecurity certification. So I've done that, we're gonna go through that, we're gonna take a little bit of a, a look at kind of what's included there um, as well, and just explain the, the other bits and pieces for you. So once you've downloaded that, you then have a step-by-step -step of kind of what you should do next. So it's talking about committing to uh, taking the exam, so scheduling the exam, and if you want to take this exam um, right now, or at least while it's in the pilot, the exam voucher is only going to cost you $125. So don't let that totally put you off, you know, that there's, you know, if you want to do the, the pilot exam, that there's a cost there right now, um, because you know, if you're already working in an organization that funds training for you, then it may be an option for you to be able to get this certification funded. Now, one thing to note is that you're not going to have the content if you do need the content available without paying for it. So you can see here um, in the prepare, prepare phase that they kind of talk about here, there's a few different ways to prepare. So we touched on the self-paced uh, training that they're going to make available uh, to as, as part of their pledge from, from September. So you can see here that if you wanted to buy it now that you can buy it for $225. Or you can see that there's official online instructor-led training for $549. And you can see there that there's official online instructor-led plus the exam voucher, which is $625. So for me, if you are looking at uh, doing this option, then um, I would look at the pilot self-paced plus exam voucher right now, if you was interested in doing this right now. And then lastly, it says that for a limited time, when you purchase a pilot exam voucher or training plus an exam voucher, uh, meaning the uh, one of uh, one of these two here, that you'll have two opportunities to successfully complete the exam. 
So what that's saying is if you don't pass the exam the first time round, you can always revisit the topics. Let's say, for instance, you took out the self-paced pilot training and, uh, you know, spruce up on those areas where you need a little bit, bit of improvement. And then you can go ahead and take the exam again without having to pay for the exam again. So that, in my opinion, is is really good because it's going to give you an opportunity to take a look at kind of what the exam consists of, the sort of things you need to uh, make sure you really do have down. And, you know, we spoke about those domains, which we're going to look at in a little bit more detail now. Um, but, the you know, there's probably going to be percentages assigned to, um, weighted percentages assigned to, each one of those domains that you need to focus on. So, you know, it really gives you that opportunity to um, really uh, try and get this certification if you don't do it the first time for whatever reason. And let's be honest, and, and I know from my experience, when I first got into the IT industry, one of my first certifications that I took, I was really nervous. And I think the nerves really um, overtook what I was trying to achieve in obviously passing the the exam and um, you know it's not really a good experience when when you like that so you know being able to do the exam more than once and not have to worry about paying for that the second time round if you do need to do it the second time round in my opinion really helps Okay, cool. So we've we've kind of looked at the steps if you wanted to go through it now. Um, and we've spoke about the, the, the ISC squared pledge and uh, what's coming in September around this certification. Now let's look at a little bit more about this guide uh, that they uh, recommend that we take a look at. And this is really looking at the, the entry level certification that we're talking about. So the entry level cyber security certification. And it's really emphasizing on the point here that you don't need work experience in order to take this entry level cybersecurity certification uh, exam and, and obtain the certification. And that's one great thing that's going to help really um, entice more people, especially those that are career changers and get into cybersecurity and help bridge that gap. So it starts off with an opening on sort of the sort of candidates that they are looking at um, going for this certification, if you like. Uh, take that with a uh, pinch of salt, really, because as I said, you know, this is an entry level certification where no experience is required. So you could pretty much be anybody from any walk of life and if you're willing to learn and you are motivated and want to get into cyber security then I don't see why this certification is uh, not for you. So why cyber security? So it talks about the uh, the demand in cyber security right now you know, that we briefly touched on in terms of you know the the skill shortage um, you know, organizations just not having the staff required in order to protect organizations and to carry out cybersecurity related tasks as well. And it's got a few statistics here in terms of sort of the growth in the industry that's uh, that they're going to see moving forward. And, um, you know, he's talking about really the importance of um being prepared and making sure that we have cybersecurity professionals ready uh, and working in the industry to close that gap. It then goes on to the experience. So it says that there's no specific prerequisites to take the exam. Uh, however, it is recommended that candidates have a basic information technology uh, background or, or knowledge. Um, no experience or no work experience rather in cybersecurity or formal education which includes degrees or diplomas are required and it says if you are a problem solver with an analytical mindset entry level cybersecurity uh, certification is the one for you so let's just kind of look at that a little bit more so you know don't worry if you kind of stopped at the part where I said and, and where it mentions that 
it's recommended that candidates have basic IT knowledge because let's be honest, most people these days, you know, we, we're living in a, in, a, in a technical world at the minute. You know, technology is just everywhere, whether we're on phones and using applications or whether we're just browsing the internet, you know, that could be considered as basic IT knowledge. So you kind of know what a computer is, you, you know, you know what a web browser is, let's say, you know what applications are, um, you know, that could be considered basic IT knowledge. So if you're thinking that you need some sort of specific basic IT knowledge in, in terms of, you know, what a, let's say, for instance, how to operate a router or a switch um, or to uh, install um, antivirus software and enable certain features, don't worry about that. You know, let's just focus on the requirement in that you can take this with no work experience. It then talks about the potential potential entry level cybersecurity roles that you can go into, and there's a list here. Um, so I won't read them out, but you can see there by just taking this entry level certification, not only leads to the start of your career within cybersecurity, you have a variety of different roles that you can go into potentially when you have achieved this certification. Now let's get on to the pilot exam overview. So this is where we look at a uh, couple or all of the domains and the weightings behind them that we spoke about, just to give you an idea of sort of what's going to be required here and what's mainly important. So looking at domain one, security principles, it says that the need here is to understand the security concepts of information assurance, risk management process, security controls, the ISC squared code of ethics and governance process. Okay, so if we take that at face value and then we look at the pie chart here on the left hand side, we can see that this is going to equate to 26% of the exam. So you can expect that you're going to get uh, quite a few questions around this on the exam. And if you actually look at the rest of the weightings, you can actually see that security principles is the one that's the most uh, weighted. So that means you're going to receive more questions around security principles than any of the other domains. You can see then domain two, we start to look at how to understand business continuity, disaster recovery, and incident response. And again, if we look at the pie chart, we can see that this equates to 10% of what you're going to be expected to answer in the exam. So not, not much, but nevertheless, it's in the exam, so it's important. And you're probably going to be looking at an overview of each of these just to understand you know, the, the concepts, as it says there, for Domain 2. In Domain 3, you're going to be looking at access control concepts. So understand physical access controls and logical access controls. So this sits at around 22%. So it's an important concept and uh, one that I feel should be sitting around about there, maybe slightly higher in some respect, but... Um, this is an in, nevertheless an important concept that you are going to be required to, to know. Then we go to domain four, so network security. So this is understanding computer networking, network threats, and attacks and network security infrastructure. So this sits at 24%. And I'd probably say that's, um, that's a, good, a good place to put this. And um, this is probably where you're going to be covering um, general networking, the sort of different threats that are out there at the minute, and um, attacks that uh, exist as well. So this is another good one, and, and one that I would say is, is quite important because when we start talking about computer networking, networking is the foundation 
of computing. You need to understand IP addressing, you might need to understand routing protocols and how they work. Um, there's, you might need to understand what a switch is, what a router is, how to route traffic, uh, things like that. So that is very important. So if that is an area that you want to learn more about, then I would recommend looking at the CCNA certification. I could probably say that there isn't a certification out there that is on par with the CCNA certification, which is an associate network uh, networking certification from Cisco. So do take a look at that if you want to understand a little bit more about uh, networking. Lastly, domain five focuses on security operations. And this takes a look at understanding data security, systems hardening, best practices, security policies, and awareness training. And this sits at 18%. So you can see from the domains and the pie chart here, the importance of each one and the sort of weighting that you're going to be looking at and being quizzed on in the exam. So with this PDF, you get an idea of what you need to really make sure that you understand. Go through the self-paced training or the whatever training that you have to, to get through this content if you are looking at taking this exam. And my advice would be to, once you've gone through the training, make sure you brush up on the areas that you don't feel too confident in, whether that's going back over the content or looking at other content outside of ISC squared to really understand each of the concepts and get it all down. And then what I would do is then I would book the exam, take the exam, and hopefully you pass first time. And if you don't, you should get have an idea of sort of where you need to focus on for the next time round. And then again, go back on those topics, cover those topics again, maybe go over the topics that you do feel comfortable with just to uh, make sure it's fresh in your head and then reschedule that exam. We can see in terms of number of exam items, that means number of questions, essentially in the exam, you're going to get 100 questions. You can see that administration time is two hours. So that is going to be the um, time allotted in order to get through those 100 questions. And then you can see the fee of $125 that we spoke about for uh, booking and taking that pilot exam in order to get that certification. And then lastly, we can see uh, that you get two exam attempts. It then goes down to explain a little bit more about the different ways that you can prepare that we touched on briefly previously. So you've got the online instructor led um, that you can purchase. You've got the online self paced that you can go through yourself. And then you've got the exam only. I'm not gonna touch on the online instructor led because I think most individuals would probably look at the online self paced course. So let's just take a look really what this consists of. So as I said, this is a content that allows you to work at your own pace. We can see that it's um, recorded review sessions that have been led by authorized ISC squared instructors. So to me, you may be getting um, content that's been previously used for uh, online instructor led training that's kind of trickle down into self-paced training. It mentions that this training is lecture style learning experience with visual aids and features. So that tells me that you're going to have an agenda that you're going to go through and it's going to cover each of the domains and concepts uh, in, in order. You also get practice questions, which I think is great. So this is this is really good because it means that once you've gone through the content, you can really see where you are at in terms of your knowledge by taking 
uh, some practice tests before actually taking the real exam. So if anything, you know, you're really getting a, 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 a good go at getting an idea of what to expect in the real exam. And lastly, it says that you get 180 days access to the course content. So it looks like that the course content is not just there forever once you've purchased it. You've kind of got a time limit. So what I would say that if you are looking at going down this route and using the online self-paced training, then do make sure you can commit your time to actually studying and going through the self-paced content and getting that exam booked. And what I would say as well is make sure that you time it in a way that if you do not pass the first exam attempt, you still have access to this course content in order to go back and do that. So what I'm saying in other words is that as soon as you purchase the online self-paced plus the exam voucher, make sure that your 180 days from that point is dedicated to trying to get this certification. Then it's got some more information about why to choose ISC Squared training. And then it's got benefits of ISC Squared entry level certification. So it's just basically saying that you have the opportunity to validate your knowledge based on the training that you've done. It then starts to give you a pathway to different cybersecurity careers and more certifications. So it speaks about the more advanced certification, the CISSP. There is other certifications, cybersecurity related outside of ISC squared. And I'm sure as you kind of get more familiar with cybersecurity, you'll start to understand the different organizations and different certifications that are out there. It then speaks about job offers and advancement, you know, by having certifications, especially from reputable uh, providers. It really does stand out on your resume, your CV, and uh, gives you that opportunity to prove you know what you know and get those job offers that you are looking for. It says that you'll have access to a community of professionals and then, yeah, it speaks about, in general, getting higher salaries and growth and learning. So, you know, further development, essentially. An interesting point there on the higher salaries is that it says that ISC Squared members report 35% higher salaries than non-members. I don't know how true that is. Um, obviously, they've probably got some statistics around that, so... If that's something you are looking for, then you know that could be a benefit for for you as well. And then it closes out with uh, comments from other cybersecurity professionals um, as well. So that, in essence, is the information around the new entry level cybersecurity certification that ISC Squared are offering. So if you are interested, like I said, you can kind of look at the links that I've included in the video description for further details. You can uh, wait until you get more information about the uh, upcoming uh, pledge in September. But whatever your circumstances may be, if you are watching this video, then the chances are you are interested in cybersecurity and potentially looking at ways to explore a career in cybersecurity and that's a good step in my opinion so i would really recommend from what i can see with regards to this certification i would really recommend taking a look at this and even trying to get certified if you are looking at a career change and looking at getting into cybersecurity, this is going to give you some good foundational knowledge. If you are looking to maybe move into cybersecurity and are already in the IT industry, then you know you may already have the relevant experience and skills already. You may not have all the skills uh, or 
knowledge of all the different domains that we've just covered in this certification but it may not be worth you taking this certification you could just maybe look online at some of the areas that you want to learn more about however nevertheless if you are looking at getting this certification even though you may have some of the uh, skills already then it's there it's available so why not take it for those that are looking to learn more about networking and maybe looking at Cisco related certifications as well, covering you know the foundational CCNA um, associate networking uh, knowledge that covers a lot and will give you a great foundational base for moving into cybersecurity and things like that. We do have a, a Discord group that you can join and ask questions about uh, different certifications related to Cisco and in, in in relation to the CCNA as well. That link will be in the video description as well, so do check that out. But please do let me know if you have any more questions. And lastly, I'll just close out by thanking Trevor Lewis for reaching out with the uh, latest blog post around this, which has enabled me to do this uh, video today and provide you with this information so good luck in your journey good luck in taking this new entry-level cyber security certification if you are going down that path and please do keep me updated i'd love to know those that have kind of gone down the route and passed the certification i'd love to know your experiences so do drop me some comments and let me know how that has worked out for you